In this video, we're going to talk about rule ordering. And this is a very important concept for SPE phonology, which is the type of rules we've been doing so far. And in SPE phonology, rules work one at a time. And what this means is that different orders can make different predictions. So for instance, if we have some input and it goes through rule one first and then rule two, it will have some output. If we take that same input, but do rule two first and then rule one after, we may get a different output. And I'm going to introduce some rules and then go through an example and show that the ordering of the rules can change our predictions. So the two rules I'm going to use are first, it's I raising, so this is Canadian raising, so the difference between the word right and ride. In other words, I raises before voiceless consonants. Uh, I know before I use minus sonorant, but this can extend to voiceless glides and nasals and liquids as well. Um, the second rule is called tapping. So tapping, it takes a plus anterior minus continuant, makes it a tap, and that is going to be between uh, sounds that are not consonants and when syllables without stress come after. So it's kind of an example just to show you the example because I think examples are better than me explaining it over and over again uh, with features. If I have a word like butter, then actually I should change this to butter. Okay, so this t is a plus anterior minus continuant sound. So this is going to become a flap because this uh is not a consonant before it, and afterwards I have a vowel or a syllabic sound and it's not stressed, so what I end up is with the word butter. So you can kind of hear a difference there. Butter and butter. This isn't a duh, as in butter. It's not butter, it is a flat butter. So these two rules in different combinations will make different predictions for different words. And let's see that in action. So let's just look at six words first to see these going on and just to emphasize the difference. So let's compare lad and ladder. So here's the difference between the d in lad and this tap in ladder. Lad, ladder. There is a very clear difference in the sound here. So these two are not the same sound. And this is because what follows in the word ladder is a stressless vowel. Now the difference between right and ride, we can hear the vowel difference because I am a Canadian speaker, so right and ride. Uh, right, this is raised because this is a voiceless consonant, while ride is not raised because this is a voiced consonant. And we can combine the two. So for instance, light has raising because this is a voiceless consonant, but then we can also do flapping when we have a stressless syllable after. So this isn't lighting, this is lighting, lighting. It is the same sound in the word ladder, ladder, lighting. But notice that this isn't the same vowel in the word ride. So this isn't lighting, this is lighting, which means that two processes have gone on for me to make this word lighting. The tapping rule applied and the raising rule applied. So let's look at two words and I'm going to pronounce them uh, with a lot of emphasis first. So writing and riding, uh, I am still going to do raising when I say that, uh, but essentially the underlying forms or the underlying representations of these words look nearly identical. So these are the completely phonemic representations. In other words, this is before raising, this is before tapping. Before raising, before tapping. So we're going to do these rules one at a time. The first one we're going to do is I raising. So what this means is that if I occurs before a voiceless consonant, it is going to raise. So in the word writing, well, we can do some raising here, and this would become writing. Uh, let's make sure I'm making this phonetically proper. Okay, so right now this is 
writing. But in writing, this d here is voiced, so there is no raising. So there is no change at this point for the word writing. But then we apply the tapping rule. And what does the tapping rule say? Well, if there is some plus anterior sound before a stressless vowel, which occurs in both of these cases, then the coronal sound will become a flap. So in both cases, we are going to get that the t becomes a flap for uh, writing, and in the word writing, the d here is also going to become a flap. And I shall really make sure that these don't look like the r's at all. Okay, so the surface form for these look pretty similar. The real difference between these two is the vowel. So for some speakers, there is no difference in the pronunciation of these two words at all. In fact, if you are in Eastern America, or Eastern United States, I should say, then you won't hear a difference. You won't hear the difference between writing and writing, like us Canadian speakers say, they would both be just be pronounced as writing and writing. I am writing a paper, I am riding a bike. Well, I would say something like, I'm writing a paper, I'm riding a bike. So, different. And if we do eye raising before tapping, we get the predicted results, or at least we get results that are consistent with the way that I speak. But what happens if we flip the order of the rules? So let's say we do tapping first. Okay, so tapping says that if we have this coronal sound, it gets changed to a flat before a stressless syllable. Okay, so in both cases here, we have flapping occurring. And at this point, oh, what's this? These look really similar. Yeah, okay. So eye raising. Eye raising is gonna happen next. And eye raising happens when I comes before a voiceless consonant. Now, flaps are not voiceless. Flaps are voiced, which means that these rules do not apply to either of these words, which means that the surface form for both of these words are just going to be writing. So whether we start with the underlying representation for writing or writing, we're going to get the same pronunciation for both of these by switching the order of the rules. Now, what does this mean? Well, this means that these two processes can happen in two different orders, and depending on the order, we get different results. So, most American speakers would have this set of rules, so this ordering. Tapping would happen first and then eye raising. Of course, it just so happens that there is no eye raising at all when we do the rules in this order. Well, Canadian speakers have this rule ordering for their pronunciation with raising and tapping. So kind of the take home message of this is that rule order matters and that dialectal differences may just be a result of different rule orderings. Now, of course, it might just be the case that, well, Canadian speakers have eye raising and American speakers do not have eye raising, so why include them? But the fact is that even if we do include them for both languages, and we kind of keep this as some generalization, uh, then by manipulating the order of the rules, we can still account for those dialectal differences, even if those rules are there when they're not used. But then there's another side of things. And that is that the more rules you have, the more complicated your phonological analyses will be. So we had two rules, which means we had two orders to consider. But if you have three rules, then you have to consider six orderings. And that's a lot more. Imagine if you want to extend this to five rules. If you have five rules in your system, you need to work with 120 different orderings. And at this point, you need to get on your computer and make some macros for this because doing 120 orderings by hand is just insane. So this is kind of the, I guess, the difficulty in rule orderings in phonology. So if you're in a course, if you're taking a class, you're looking at a problem set, you're probably not going to get more than two rules. 
Uh, you may get three rules in some cases, probably not on an exam just because it would take too long, but it's not com it's not, I wouldn't say uncommon to get problems that require three rules at some point. So if you have any questions about rule orderings, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer your questions.